Howdy, and welcome back to part 4 of my Bevy intro series where we're making a tower defense game. In the last part, we added a lot of systems and moved our code out into plugins. Now in this part, we're going to learn how to get keyboard input, how to use a community plugin to let us click on models, clean up our placeholder cubes with some real art, and finally spawn towers where the user clicks. Before we start, I want to make a quick shout out to a pull request I got in the GitHub repo for this project. This PR adds the use of Bevy Rapier, which is the premier plugin for physics in Bevy. This can replace the simple distance check we used last episode for collision checking, and I'm really grateful that somebody took the time to write this up. I'm making it available as a branch on the main repo so anyone can look and see how the physics engine is tied into our game. Now to get started, let's set up some basic camera controls so we can look around the world. I'm going to create a system called Camera Controls, and here I need to query for the transform of our camera mutably. Thankfully, the camera has a marker component called Camera 3D, so I can filter my query by that. I'm also going to need the actual player keyboard input. Thankfully, there is a resource inserted and maintained by the input plugin, which is added by the default plugins. And this gives us access to all of the player keyboard input. The plugin also gives us mouse, touch, and gamepad data, and is a good model for how you can add other input mechanisms to your game if you want. For keyboards, the resource is input with the generic parameter key code. Finally, because we want movement in a frame rate independent manner, we're going to get the time resource. Now, to get the camera out of the query, we can use single mute. This function will work if and only if there's exactly one match to the query, otherwise this will panic. You can use get single mute if you want to be able to handle and recover from the error, but in our case, we add the camera on startup and we're only ever expecting one. So panicking if either of those aren't true seems fine to me. Next, I want to use W and S to move the camera forward and backward, so we need its forward direction. Thankfully, the transform has a forward function on it that gives us the forward vector. Because our camera is angled down though, we have a non-zero y value. So let's zero that out and then normalize the resulting vector. This way, we're always a constant height off of the ground. Now, if the user pressed W, we can move the camera translation by a speed value times the direction times the delta time. The input resource also has functions for just pressed and just released, and these will fire for one frame when the user presses or releases a key. We can do the exact same thing for backwards movement and get the left vector to do the same thing for left and right movement. One last thing I want to be able to do is to rotate the camera of Q and E. So we'll check those inputs and call rotate axis. This needs the axis to rotate around, which for us is y, and an angle in radians, which I'll use another speed value times delta time for. Now when we play the game, we can finally control something and look around the scene. I've also increased the ground plane size just to make things look better. If you want to improve this, you'll probably want to constrain the camera to a fixed play area. Also, an important community plugin to point out is the Leafwing Input Manager. This tool sets on top of the default Bevy input systems and lets you work through a layer of indirection, and it supports things like letting the player remap their controls. It's an interesting library and it might be worth investing into early if that's a feature that's important to you. Now that we can look around, it's probably worth taking a break from coding to create and add in some better artwork. I'm mainly doing this because there might be some minor complexities using real models over cubes, because models are imported as a hierarchy of entities, which sometimes messes up with our assumptions. Specifically, I've made a tower model, a tower unbuilt model, and a target model. I'm exporting all of these from Blender as GLB files and remembering to test re-importing them back into Blender to make sure the export settings were correct. Then, I'm going to add them into the game assets resource and load them in in the asset loading system we made a few episodes ago. Now, when we spawn the basic scene, we can spawn scene bundles instead of the PBR mesh bundles we were using. I'm also going to remove the tower component from the unbuilt tower model, which will stop it from being able to shoot because it won't match any of the tower queries. One key thing to notice now is if I run the game, it will crash, because the game assets resource isn't added by the time we spawn the scene. In fact, both of these systems are running in parallel because they're both startup systems. The workaround for this is to move asset loading earlier in the startup process. Bevy natively has startup split into three stages. Pre-startup, startup, and post-startup. And by default, all of our systems will go into the startup stage. But we can change this by calling add startup system to stage 
on the app builder and passing in our targeted stage. As a quick aside, stages in Bevy can be a complex topic, but in short, they work how you'd expect, with each stage only finishing after all of their systems have finished. The main app loop also has stages specified by the core stage enum, and this is broken into five parts. You also have the option of creating and inserting your own stages as well, which gives you tons of flexibility to work out conflicts like this. Commands run at the end of the current stage, so issues with commands is usually when I look at moving things into a different stage. We also have controls for ordering systems within a stage, but I'll show those when they come up. Next, we want to be able to click on our tower bases to build a tower there. We could handle the mouse input ourselves, but there's a bit of math and work behind the scenes going from screen space mouse position to actually clicking on an object in world space. For that reason, I'm going to use a community plugin called Bevy Mod Picking to handle our click detection. This is a community plugin recommended by the cheat book, which will handle all of the math and ray casting for us, and it will let us select meshes just by clicking. To use the plugin, we're going to follow the instructions in its README line by line. First, we add the most recent version of the plugin to our TOML file. Then we add a using statement to main. Next, as with most Bevy community plugins, all of the behavior comes from adding a plugin or a plugin group. Here it's a plugin group, so we need to add plugins with an S. Finally, we add the bundles of components that the crate offers us. One for our main camera, which will make it the picking camera, and one bundle we'll put on anything that we want to be clickable. As a tangent, let's take a quick minute to look under the hood at how this plugin works before we continue. If we look at the default picking plugins implementation, we see it's functionally four separate plugins. Two handle the highlighting features of the library, where if we hover on or select a mesh, it will control its material. The picking plugin adds four systems which are set up to run in order. We haven't covered all of this yet in the series, but now is a good time to practice reading more advanced Bevy system configurations. If we read this top down, then we see that it adds a resource, which just contains three toggles that enable the different features of the plugin. Then everything else is within an add system set to stage call. We just covered stages, and this is one way to set systems to run in a specific stage. Here they are adding all of this to the first core stage, which happens before update, so everything here will happen earlier in the frame than the systems we have created so far. Then they create a system set, which we'll cover in more detail as we go on, but the idea here is to bundle the four systems up to only run when the run criteria is met, which in this case just checks the resource to see if picking is enabled. If it is, then the following four systems will run. Each system here is given a label, which doesn't do anything on its own, but it allows the systems to force themselves to run in a specific order. The before call in the system specify that each system here should run before the system with the label specified. So the end result of all of this is the four systems run in the first stage if picking is enabled and they run sequentially. Don't worry if that's still a bit overwhelming. It gets easier with time, and we'll be writing things like this ourselves as we grow with Bevy. I hope by taking the time to slowly digest this block of code, it makes reading other Bevy plugins less intimidating to you. Also, seeing all of the complexity of doing the raycast should further justify using a plugin for this instead of writing it ourselves. Now we need to actually use the plugin's features to make our towers clickable. Unfortunately, as we've seen when we spawn scene bundles, the meshes are placed into a complex entity hierarchy. Bevy Mod Picking expects the pickable bundle to be on the entity of the mesh being selected. There are a couple of workarounds to this, but the easiest in my opinion is to create a mesh that will be the tower's mouse hitbox, and we'll add that to an entity which will become the parent of the whole model. So to create that entity, I'm going to start with the spatial bundle, which is a good simple starting bundle for an entity that's just going to be a parent to other entities. It adds the transform pair and the visibility pair. I'm also going to position the parent just a bit off the ground so our mesh won't be clipping into the grass. Next, I want to add a capsule mesh to the tower. I also want to add a not shadow caster component, which will make this capsule not cast any shadows. Finally, I want to add the pickable bundle to the entity. Now, this entity is the one that will be clicked and it will hold all of the components we'll use to indicate this is a tower. To add the actual model back in, we'll use the with children command and then spawn our tower base scene like we did before. Remember to shift this down the opposite amount I shifted the parent up, so this will still be sitting flush on the ground. Now, for testing purposes, I'll add a system to indicate which entity is selected. 
the selection component is added by the pickable bundle. If I add this as a system and run the game, I see I can click to select a tower and click somewhere else to deselect it, but there's no highlighting or indication in game. To fix this, we just need to add a material to our parent entity. Now when we run the game, we see that the model is selectable and its material is changed by the mod picking plugin. As one final touch, I want to customize the selection colors to make them transparent and a bit softer. So I'll add the highlighting component which lets me set the different materials. Now, just to round out the episode, we will make it where our selected tower will be built when we press the spacebar. So we want a tower build system where we need commands to spawn and despawn entities, a query for the entity in the selection, and finally our keyboard input like we did earlier. If space was just pressed then we'll iterate over the query, and if there's anything selected we'll despawn it and spawn the tower. Let's go ahead and make a helper function to spawn the tower, which should help manage complexity when we add more tower types. In the future we'll want to select a tower from a UI element, but that's a later problem. This function needs to borrow commands, and it also needs the assets and the position to spawn the tower at, and we'll return the entity back in case the caller wants to add something else to the entity. Here we'll just spawn the tower like we did a couple of episodes ago. Back in the building system, we need to add our assets resource and add the transform data to our query. Now we can call our new function and create the tower. Finally, as a bit of cleanup, I'll move our tower specific systems to our tower module and plugin. Now when we run the game, we can click on the tower area and press space to create a tower that will start shooting at the targets. We're getting really close to having something that you could call a game, and I hope everything about Bevy is starting to make more and more sense. Now we could make a ton of tower bases around the map and set up an enemy spawner, and the game would start playing more like a tower defense game. The last few key features we need in my opinion is targets following a track, a player health system, money to spend on towers, and some decision making about which towers are built. In the next part we'll cover the basics of Bevy UI and use that to indicate the player's health and money, and hopefully let the players choose which tower to build. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons. It means so much to me to have so much support as such a small channel. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.